Disciplinary issues can be really tricky to deal with. You should have a clear process, so let's take a look at what that should be. Remember, if the allegation concerns inappropriate contact with a child, you would need to follow the allegations management process for child protection, which may involve a referral to the local authority designated officer. Step 1. You need to decide if Mrs X actually did anything wrong. Your school's policy on expected codes of conduct will help you decide if it was a minor offence or something more serious. Most minor matters can be dealt with informally. Get the two parties together to talk. What you're trying to ensure is that they can work together positively in the future, that each of them knows what, if anything, they did wrong and what might happen if the same or similar situation happens again. So what if it seems as though it is a serious incident, such as Mrs X punching her colleague? Step 2. Suspension. You need to decide whether or not Mrs X should be away from work whilst you carry out the investigation. If you decide to suspend Mrs X, you need to have a meeting with her making sure you give her the opportunity of having a colleague or union rep come to the meeting with her. During the meeting, tell her what you think may have happened. Tell her you are suspending her as a precaution and that she will continue to be paid in full whilst an investigation is carried out. Explain that the suspension doesn't mean you have decided anything yet and that she needs to go home and not talk to anyone from work. Make sure you put the details of this meeting in writing and give the write-up to Mrs X. This is particularly important if Mrs X has mentioned anything during the suspension meeting. Step 3. Who will do the investigation? As head teacher, you need to decide who will carry out the investigation. It shouldn't be you, but someone who has so far had no involvement in the matter and can look at everything with a fresh pair of eyes. Is there a senior member of staff who is capable of doing this or do you need to bring in an external investigator? Step 4. Carrying out the investigation. The person carrying out the investigation will need to speak to any witnesses. These conversations are formal meetings and witnesses should be invited to a meeting in writing in advance and told that they have the right to have someone in the meeting with them if they choose. The investigator will review the witness statements and then interview Mrs X. It's usual for everyone's stories to be similar but also to have some differences. The investigator is simply trying to work out the facts and determine the likeliest event. Step 5. What did the investigation find? It may be that the investigation shows that nothing really happened. It was a non-event. Mrs X would come back to work the case filed away and nothing more would be done. If, however, the investigator concludes that there was misconduct that requires further action, then you need to have a disciplinary hearing. Step 6. Preparing for a disciplinary hearing. You need to write to Mrs X, inviting her to a disciplinary hearing. Your policy will determine how much notice she needs to be given. You need to state what it is you believe she has done wrong, Enclose all the evidence uncovered by the investigation, including the witness statements. And explain that she can bring a representative or work colleague, someone not involved in the case, to the hearing. You also need to decide who will actually be involved in the disciplinary hearing. For example, yourself, governors, etc. Your school policy may state who it should be. It's usually one person or a panel of no more than three people. Step 7. The disciplinary hearing. At the disciplinary hearing, both sides will review the evidence and discuss it thoroughly. Mrs X should be given her chance to give her side of the story and respond to the evidence gathered during the investigation. And the panel hearing the disciplinary can ask Mrs X about anything they still have concerns about. The panel will then need to make a final decision on whether Mrs X did commit the alleged defence. Step 8. Possible actions after the disciplinary hearing. If Mrs X did commit the offence, then the panel will need to decide what action they need to take. 
the action taken should be appropriate for the seriousness of the offence and can range from a verbal warning, more commonly known as a first warning, to dismissal. If Mrs X did punch a colleague, then it would usually be classed as gross misconduct. At this point, the person or panel hearing the case would need to consider any mitigating circumstances presented by Mrs X before making the final decision and the panel could issue a final written warning or even instant dismissal. Step 9. Instant Dismissal You will need to explain to Mrs X that her employment is terminated with immediate effect. You will need to accompany Mrs X to collect her belongings and make sure she hands over any school property including passwords, files and equipment. Step 10. Right to appeal. The decision of the disciplinary hearing panel should be put in writing and sent to Mrs X. The letter also needs to clarify that Mrs X has a right to appeal the decision and clarify how she can exercise this right.